Welcome to Off the Press on Plus TV Africa's Breakfast This Morning. My name remains Felicity Ezewike. I have two guests with me, Aisha Yusufu, who is the co-convener of Bring Back Our Girls group. Uh, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. We also have the editor-in-chief, Podium Media, Demola Akimbola. Thank you for joining us as well. Thank you for the opportunity to be here. Good morning. Good morning. The morning after, let's see what the headlines are saying. The nation, uh, that's what we'll start with. The big one there is killings, arson, violence, trail and SARS protests. Policemen among victims, Lagos others probe into a lucky shooting. IG deploys riot policemen, southwest states, emo others impose curfew. Uh, there is uh, the unsavory picture of the violence last night. Uh, inside the paper, we have President Mitt's uh, defense chief, CDS, U.S. shots consulate over lucky shooting, governors to youths embrace dialogue, hospital council secretariat set ablaze, customs warehouse invaded by hoodlands, domestic carriers cancel flights today. Uh, there are more on, this, uh, on these stories on page four, five, and nine. I'll just take all the headlines and then uh, uh, let you run with it. Uh, investor to inject, to inject $150 million uh, into PAN, new vehicles for market. We also have senators, reps to Buhari, speak to Nigerians. Lawmakers urge protesters to vacate streets. Absence of George stalls Oyo, Oyoita's trial. Pencom gets chairman DG. And then just above the masthead of the paper, there is the one on PIB scales, second reading in Senate. Will be meticulous. That's a promise coming from the senators. Manhunt for fleeing 1,993 inmates begin, begins. Uh, foreign firms barred from contracts below 5 billion naira. Adamant Ondo Deputy Governor Jai, I won't quit. Uh, that's uh, a bit on the situation in that state. I'll, I'll come to you first, Aisha. Which of these headlines would you want to take on? Well, I want to take on the headline that says killings as in violence tree and starts protests. Uh, they, uh, these are not really end starts protests. Hoodlums have been brought in by government to attack end starts protests. We all watch videos where hoodlums were brought in in government buses, in police vans uh, to attack uh, protesters, to fight by uh, security agents, a, 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 agents. And at the end of the day, these this hoodlums have, have, have either gone rogue on those who, who sponsor them, on the government that brought them in, or else it's still part of uh, the government uh, shenanigans to ensure that they pin something on the NSAS protesters. The NSAS protesters have repeatedly shown they are peaceful, they are law abiding, they clean up even the death after themselves. A lot of the hoodlums that even attacked them, some of the ones they caught, they, they handed them over to the police. The police refused to, to, to arrest them. And so there's no, there's, this head, the headline is absolutely mischievous uh, that the nation will put it this way, that uh, arson is really the end of protest. No, hoodlums are, are, are the hoodlums brought in by the government are the ones who did all of that. The lucky massacre that happened, I wonder why that is not the main headline here. Innocent Nigerians who had just flagged, who had placards, were killed, were massacred by the soldiers of the Federal Republic of Nigeria under Muhammad Buhari. And the nation is talking about killings, as in violence, killing, and protests. And no, it's straight, it's government that brought all of that in. And they are reaping what, what, they, what they want. They want to uh, kill Nigerians. Today, we now understand the reason why a policeman will say to a Nigerian, I will kill you, and the president will do nothing. Yesterday, we saw it. The president will actually kill you. I want to ask you something quickly of what you just said. Um, there are comments being made that uh, the, these young people that are being addressed as thugs and um, hoodlums are also Nigerians. What could have brainwashed them, that's what they're saying on social media, to become instruments of whatever forces to derail the protests across the country? Well, poverty has been weaponized in Nigeria. Illiteracy has also been weaponized in Nigeria. The same government uh, that uh, impoverished them, that made them to be poor, that didn't give them good quality education, are the ones 
that are using them to hate. We see what normally happens during elections. They use these talks, and of course now they're using the same talks uh, on that protest. They talk, they talk, these young Nigerians, these talks, these problems, they are also a victim of the bad governance that has been put in place, and the systemic years of, of, of uh, uh, putting down the educational system, the decay in the educational system, which is deliberate so that some people will be able to perpetrate themselves in power and be able to use them uh, with the money they've got to. We saw one of the one of the videos that came out with the with some of these youths that were used in Abuja. One of them even showed a scar where uh, where uh, SAS uh, 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 officials are. Uh, had, 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 given, had given him. And he was very angry at, at the police. And when he was asked, okay, why are you here? And he said he was here for the money because he was he was giving some money and promised no. So we have people who have weaponized poverty who continuously do that. They do it during election. They have forced people not to, many people are afraid to come out to vote during election. Now they want to ensure that people are also afraid to come out and, and protest. I, I, even though it is constitutionally allowed. And that we must not, we must not accept in this nation. The more you speak, the more questions are bust in my head. But I'll just uh, bring Demola in and just uh, focus on the headlines this morning. Um, what, what's your uh, perspective on all of these as captured uh, on the uh, nation newspaper, the killing the violence with the protests? Demola, can you hear me? Uh, let's go to the headline. Um, Aisha, still staying with you. Senators reps to Buhari speak to Nigerians. I was asking the same question of our guests earlier um, on the breakfast about the relevance of that speech now. Is it still relevant, him speaking to Nigerians? That's the question we want to we want to find. Is it really still relevant? Because the, the, what are the demands that the NSAS protesters were making? Are there too much of a demand? They said the president should speak to the nation. First of all, they gave their five to five. They, they did nothing. The, the government did not order that to say, oh, we've accepted it, but there was no action. And then they brought out the impl implementation, what they want from, from the president. Speak to Nigerians. Uh, uh, put the governing... Uh, the, the, uh, in a great world, so let me let me release all protesters and constitute the governing council of the National Human Rights uh, 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 Commission. Uh, the immediate suspension of officers indicted in various panels, and of course, uh, officers in, in command that protesters were, uh, were, were were killed should be relieved of their duties. Is this too much to ask? To say, okay, uh, compensate the victims of uh, police brutality. Release all protesters that you have taken away. Uh, psychological evaluation of disbanded officers. Increasing all of these, the Aisha, all of these has, all, all of, of this. Salary. Uh, these uh, things Aisha. are not too much to ask for, yet the president went ahead to kill protesters. Um, Aisha, no, no, not to seem like I'm speaking on behalf of the government, but there, it is in the news that um, uh, the House of Representatives speaker has said he will not sign up on a 2021 budget that does not capture a compensation for victims of police brutality. We also know that the various state government has set up panels uh, to investigate this and adequate compensations are being planned. We also know that the National Human Rights Commission, even though the legality, the legality of the board that constituted is still in question, have come out to make recommendations that 33 officers be of the uh, banned SARS, be prosecuted uh, while some cases are still being reviewed. Um, all of this, some would say, shows some sort of effort what is the gross with this, the grouse rather, with this? Can, can you, uh, you mentioned all of this. Can you tell me what the president has done? The Lagos state government is not the federal, it's, it's not the federal government. The directive? State government and or your state government is not the federal government. And even when there are some panels have been constituted, there are 36 states in Nigeria. How many of them have? The legality, you constitute this panel, you do all your whatever you need to do. At the end of the day, the indicted uh, police officers will go and say that there was because of there was no governing council, everything is null and void. Is that what we want? We are asking for justice. What is it that the president has said? On this headline, you see where the rep, the uh, has, uh, the senior president and the uh, speaker of the House of Representatives are, is, are saying to the president to speak to Nigeria. Do we need to tell the president to speak to Nigeria under this crisis, in such a crisis? The president isn't speaking, and yet Nigerians are asking what the problem is. Don't we see what the problem is? Do we need to be told what the problem is? Interesting. Uh, let's uh, take a look at the Guardian newspaper. Um, I, I don't know if we still have Demola. Do we have Demola on the line? Okay, uh, once we reconnect, we'll try and bring him into the conversation. For now, we uh, stay with you, Aisha. We go to The Guardian now. More debts nationwide. That's the big one there. Of course, the picture of what is going on is also there.
More deaths nationwide, curfew in nine states, uh, some riders to uh, the development there. Underneath that, we have NSARS. Ten feared killed in Oyo, Plateau, Kano. Niger Delta youths give FG seven-day ultimatum on resource control. Bloody Tuesday at Lekki Tollgate. I will not resign as Ondo Deputy Governor, says Ajayi. Um, they're, the rider, let me just take uh, some of the riders to the um, uh, screamer of more deaths nationwide. Uh, Lagos, Kanu, uh, um, FCT, Plateau Oreo as flashpoints. Soldiers invade protesters in Lekki. U.S. shuts down consulate in Lagos. Uh, president uh, meets with a uh, diplomatic uh, community. Um, Aisha. Let's let's uh, take yeah. let's uh, take um, the comments about um, IGP ordering anti riot pleas. That's uh, one of the rider to the big screamer on the Guardian newspaper. Well, at this moment, for me, um, the IG has repeatedly shown that uh, he doesn't have control over his men. We've seen the IG where he called for police to protect uh, our protesters. Uh, to ensure that uh, they, they discharge their duties constitutionally in protecting protesters and not uh, attack anyone. Yet protesters were killed by, by, by police. And now they are deploying uh, riot police uh, out there. The thing is that the, the, the protesters are, are not the problem. The problems are the hoodlums that the police themselves brought in, that the government brought in. And there are video. And they, the, the most the impunity of it all is that Police vehicles were actually used to transport some of these hoodlums. We, uh, and you see where poli a, 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 woman, a video with a woman in police uniform actually meeting with the hoodlums. And, 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 and oh my goodness, it, it's unbelievable the kind of impunity that happens in Nigeria. But you know why all of these things happen? It's because of the fact that when things happen, Nigerians are silent. They don't want to die. They want to be safe. Meanwhile, we are dying every day. Shiites were killed. IPOPs were killed. NSAS protesters are being killed. People are moving on, and you know what? They're going to keep killing. And offered, what are the what is NSAS protesters? All they asked for was that please stop killing us. And they came to to cry out to the federal government, to the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Commander Regime, and he ordered more of them to be gunned down. Just protesters who had the Nigerian flag with them, who had their bottles of uh, water that they're drinking, who simply had placards. It's what they killed. One of the protesters that was killed at Lekki told me yesterday still had a Nigerian flag uh, in his hand. It's, it's really heinous, the kind of nation that we've turned out to. Uh, one more of those riders I would like your thoughts on is the, uh, the situation with the curfew. Uh, the MBA, according to The Guardian now, is that the, the curfew may collapse Nigeria. That's the warning being given by the MBA. What's your thinking on that? Well, I think... Uh, 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 the, the those that we have in uh, in authority that are elected, and you see why it is we always we have election of thugs, thugs that intimidate people out of uh, participating in election, and then we we have this kind of people in office. They seem not to read the post in the nation. Uh, there's so much anger, there is so much uh, 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 oppression and suppression, and people there's so much hunger. Also, people have lost their means of livelihood. People are frustrated. People are saying that the, the government isn't there for them, and there's this anger, and yet it seems that those in government are not seeing this anger. We've had the, a series of reports that have been going on uh, where they're saying that, look, this COVID-19 is going to escalate a lot of unrest in, in countries, a lot of protests, and we seem not to learn from history. We seem not, not to learn from anything, no scenario, building, nothing. We just uh, keep going on as a nation. And for me, I think uh, yeah, the, M the MBA, right, not just the, the coffee itself, but the handling of this whole issue, where the more they give the violence, the more resolute uh, the, the youth the, the youth are. These are not the normal, these are not, this is not the normal protest that they, they see. What we normally do all the time, protest of empathy. This is a protest for survival. The youth are being killed anyway. And they are saying to you, we are being killed under the cover of darkness. We are coming out to in, in, in the daylight and coming to you. And yet the Nigerian government is still killing them. You think they are going to get out of the street? They're going to get more angry. 
All right, um, one more before we move on to the next paper. This one on Niger Delta Youths give FG uh, seven-day ultimatum on resource control. In the face of all that is going on, what worries you the most about this ultimatum? Uh, well, for me, uh, nothing worries me really. Uh, the, the Nigerian government have shown that they are, uh, they are as heartless as heartless can be. And uh, you have uh, a situation in the country where uh, things always seem to be upside down. Uh, if Zamfara can control their gold, why not Niger's, uh, Niger Delta also control their oil? All right, let's, let's move on um, to other papers. Let's see what the Nigerian Tribune has. Outrage over shootings as Lekki Toll Gate turns bloody. A couple of riders, security operatives, fire live bullets as NSAR's protesters run. Many killed in Ibado, Lagos, Jos. We also have police stations, vehicles burnt. Lagos, Ekiti, Plateau, Oshun, Ondo, declare curfew. Oyo, Ondo, Ekiti, Ogun, shut schools. Foreign airlines cancel flights into Lagos Airport. Now, these are some of the rider to the big one. Outrage over shootings as Lekki Tollgate turns bloody. Nigeria's economy lost 700 billion naira in 12 days. That's LCCI. Uh, U.S. shots Lagos consulate over NSAR's protest. Uh, there are more. NSAS, I won't sign off 2021 budget without compensation for victims. That's Bajabia Mila. IGP others deployment of anti-riot police officers nationwide. Senate asked Buhari to address Nigerians. Reps tell president to issue executive order on police brutality. We are committed to implementing demands, FG tells international community. Which would you want to take on? Well, I would take on, I won't sign off 2021 budget without compensation for victims by Baja uh, uh, Mila. Uh, one of the things we, uh, we, we have to see, what this tells us is that, first of all, there was part of the demands that we asked for was that there should be compensation for, for, for victims and their families. Uh, and the, the, the federal government said that, yes, they're going to, they've accepted this demand. But you can see when they, the, in the budget, it's not there. And of course, if it's not there in the budget, where are you going to pull this money from? And so this is the reason why the NSAS protesters did not leave the street, even when the government said that, oh, we've, we've met your demand, because they know they are all worse. So you can see from this, it's not in the 2021 budget. And there, I, uh, kudos to the speaker for, for speaking up, uh, for, for speaking up for, for, for the Nigerian youth and seeing what is on ground. And I just wonder why the federal uh, government isn't seeing that this is a dangerous uh, moment that they are pushing our nation to. And at this moment, Nigeria is vulnerable and we do not need such violence uh, in, in, in our country. Uh, also, uh, in June 20, uh, 2019, a report or, 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 or was given to the press, uh, president on the reform of, of SARS. Uh, a committee had been, a panel had been constituted in 2018 and June 3rd, uh, 2019, this report was given to the president. And the president said that in six months, if they're going to implement the, the, the recommendations in, in that report. But guess what? It's 16 months after and nothing has been done. That also is one of the reasons why the protesters said they are not leaving the street until they see action. And for what uh, the, the, the Speaker of the House of Representatives has, has said, that is part of the action uh, that is demanded. All right, we are committed to implementing demands, FG tells international community. Uh, how do you react to that, especially uh, when we know that uh, the likes of Hillary Clinton, um, Anthony Joshua, Nigerian celebrities, and uh, even our, uh, Mohammed, our representative at the UN, they are all speaking up? Well, uh, the FG... Their words are not to be believed. They have repeatedly shown it. Like I said, to, I just finished saying uh, the report that was given to the uh, president uh, on the panel that was set up on the reform of, of SARS in 2000, in, on June 3rd, 2019, which he said in, in six months they were going to uh, implement it. They were committed to it. It's 16 months after nothing has been done. And between that, in, within the 16 months, a lot of Nigerians uh, have been killed. Uh, so the federal government is known to... For, for a lot of uh, broken promises to say things that they, they are not going to do. And uh, for me, I would just simply say they are just simply, those are lies. They're not doing it. 
All right, let, in it. Let, let's see what's on the punch newspaper quickly. A Black Tuesday, uh, 49 killed as protests turn bloody. Uh, that's uh, one on the punch newspaper. Uh, Black Tuesday, 49 killed as protests turn bloody. Soldiers shoot seven dead in Lekki, 20 die in Lagos areas. Banks burnt. Six policemen killed. Police stations burnt in Lagos. Or your Abia. Stop killing young protesters. Hillary Clinton, PDP tells Buhari Army. I'll take in some of these already. Let's see if there's um, uh, new comments coming in. FG excludes foreign firms from contracts below 5 billion naira. Address Nigerians to, on protest now, Senate tells Buhari. And then we have this one that says, Reps summon CBN. Reps summon CBN over alleged clamp down on 5,000 accounts. Uh, those are some on the front page. NHRC ask police to pay 35 Lagos Abuja Rivers victims. 164 million naira. Serap hires Falano to defend Twitter CEO. That's a 1 billion naira suit. I don't know if you're aware of this story, Aisha. Yeah. Uh, could you? Uh, so <laughs> it's, it's, just, it's, just, it's just comical. I just think it's just comedy. One, one, one Nigerian decided that he was going to sue uh, Twitter, uh, sue the uh, Twitter. CEO Jack, because of the fact that he supported the NSAS movement and uh, he, he asked people to donate uh, to, the, uh, to the feminist coalition that were putting money together and helping Nigerians all over. I mean, it's, it's just pathetic, honestly, with all the things that are happening in Nigeria. But then those are some of the shenanigans that they want people to focus on. What I want us to focus on is that 49 people have been killed and they have been killed due to the incompetence of this government, the Harris administration, under the watchful eye of uh, Major retired Major General Muhammad Buhari uh, and his deputy and his vice president, Professor Yemi Osibanjo, who is a pastor, who is a son, who is a professor. And uh, these are the things that, that we really should focus on. Not the, all those other ones. We, we, we will not major uh, in, in the mind. In the mind. Uh, police, uh, have, police have killed, soldiers have killed, hoodlums have killed. Uh, and, and, and so all of this, you know, brought in by the government, on peaceful protesters who simply said, please stop killing us. We are Nigerians that have been failed by this nation. We have a right to live. They've carved out a niche for themselves, and yet we are killing them one after the other. All right. Uh, in summary, uh, before we go, I'd like to take your thoughts on the way forward in all of this. Your First off, your assessment of how the Lagos state government has been addressing the situation. Uh, we know he's been to the hospital. He says there will be uh, comments later on um, this morning. Uh, but overall, what is the way forward? Until, uh, yes, until yesterday, with the uh, Lekki Tollgate massacre, and uh, okay, and when before he came over, when he was still in, in, in what was I think in this Ondo where they did the recent election, the uh, Lagos State Governor was there and he didn't come back on time. That was very wrong. But when he did come back to Lagos, he went to see the protesters. Lagos State Government had been doing very well. Lagos State Governor had been doing very well until yesterday's massacre. Yesterday's massacre, massacre in the sense that Lagos State were co is complicit. They were part of the ones who went to remove, and I think there were pictures of one of their. Uh, officials who went to remove the security cameras, and in that way, uh, uh, seeing that uh, the police, uh, the soldiers were able to come in and, and really uh, and kill uh, protesters. So in that, uh, there, there's that uh, com complicity. Uh, otherwise, the, the Lagos State Governor had really acted in, in a way that you expect leadership to be. He, had, he listened to the demands of, of, of the uh, protesters. He took those demands to, to see the president. And nobody will tell us that the president doesn't know what, what is happening because when he was reading out the demands to the president, the president sniggered. The president laughed. Of course, of course, he knew he was going to send people to go and kill the protesters anyway. That was why he did all, all, all that he did. But apart from but yesterday, just brought everything down. No, 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 no. That's not acceptable at all. You don't just kill citizens who, who simply said, please protect us. The missing military that are being killed by, soldier, by, by terrorists, by Boko Haram, that have not been able to do anything to, 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 to Shekau and, and his men that are terrorizing Nigeria, decided to open fire on innocent Nigeria. And it's indeed, uh, it was indeed a black, uh, black Tuesday. And uh, it's really a low point in the history of Nigeria. And let's not forget that Muhammad Buhari is a president and Yemi Osibanjo 
is the vice president. We will Thank not forget. You. Thank you very much, Aisha Yusufu, for your time with us on The Breakfast this morning. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, we must also thank uh, Demola Akimbola, who unfortunately couldn't stay with us due to uh, bad network. We thank him in absentia.